Hey guys, I'm GamerMate, welcome back to a new video. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing to make a very animated jump scare in Roblox Studio. So, let's get right into the video. Okay, so first off, we need to set a few things up. So, in the workspace, we have a few things, like this part here, and this is just a part called Jump Scare Trigger. And this is going to be the part that you touch to actually trigger the jump scare. So, I just made it green and transparency set to 0.9. Usually you'd want to set the transparency to 1, so you can't actually see it. But for now, I'm just going to keep mine at 0 0.9. And then, I also have can collide set to false. And then, I also have can anchored set to true. Inside of it, we have a script called jump scare script. But we'll go over that in a minute. Then we also have this folder called jump scare. Inside of it, we have a camera, which is just a part called camera. And this is going to be where the like player's camera will go to. So this is going to be what the player can see, where this camera is. Once again, we have can collide off and anchored true. And if you want, you could also change transparency to one, like this. And make sure it's called camera. Then we have a model called walls. Inside of it, we just have these parts here. And they're just set to black and neon, as well as can collide true and anchored true. Then for the actual jump scare, we have this dummy here called monster. Inside of it, we have just a mask here. And that's pretty much it, as well as the usual body parts and stuff. But then inside the humanoid, we have an animation. And if you don't know how to add in an animation, click the humanoid, click plus, and type in animation. And make sure it's this one. Then I set the animation ID to this animation I made before recording. I'm not sure if the animation will work if you use mine. So if you don't know how to make your own animation, click plugins, add in build rig, and then I'll just go and do a block rig. Then go to animation editor, and then click on the rig that you want to animate, and then name the clip. Then we can start animating our, our NPC. So once you finish your animation, like this, Click on these dots here, then publish to Roblox. Then you can give it a name and description. Then once you've done that, click submit. Then make sure to click this button here to copy the animation ID. Then just click close. Now you can just delete the dummy and close out of this window. Then go back to your monster. Then click animation, animation ID, right click and then paste, and there you go. And it should play your animation once you script it. Then over in Replicate Storage, we have a remote event called Jump Scare Event. And we're gonna be using this to fire it to all the clients, or just the client that triggers the jump scare. So we can actually change our camera view and stuff like that. Then in the starter GUI, we have a local script called Jump Scare Script. And inside of it, we have this sound this is going to be the sound that plays once we trigger the jump scare. So if we play it. There we go. Now if we open up the trigger. And then go inside the script. So up top, we have a variable here called jump scare event. And this equals to the game dot replicated storage dot jump scare event. Which is that remote event in the replicated storage. Then down here, we have a variable called debounce. And this equals to false. So we're going to be using this as like a cooldown. So we can't like spam the trigger. Then down here, we're using the touched event on the script's parent, which is the trigger. So once the trigger has been touched, this is what hit is. So hit is basically the thing that touched the trigger. Then we're checking if it hits parent, which should be the character, has a humanoid. So we're checking if a player that touched the trigger has a humanoid. And if they do, then we're checking if the debounce equals to false, and if it is, then we set it to true. Then we're firing the jump scare event to all the clients, meaning that all the players in the game will see it. But if you want only the player who touched the trigger to see it, and not all the other players, then we can make a variable, so local, and then we'll do player. And this is going to equal to game dot players, which is the player service, then colon, get player, from character, 
put them in brackets, we'll do hit.parent. So what we're doing is making a variable called player and player equals to game dot players. Then we're using this function called get play from character. And what it does is we get the player from the character that hit the trigger, which is hit.parent. Then instead of doing fire all clients, we could do colon fire client brackets. Then we could do player, then that should work. So that's how you could do it if you wanted to just do it to the player that hit the trigger. But if you want all players in the game to see it, we could just remove the variable and then change this back to fire all clients. Then after two seconds, we're setting debounce back to false, meaning that we can touch the trigger after two seconds. Also, if you didn't want a cooldown, I would just rather destroy the trigger. We can just remove one of these ends, the debounce and the wait, as well as this if statement and the variable. Then we could do uh, script.parent colon destroy and then brackets. So you could do that if you want to destroy a trigger so players can't trigger it more than once. But I'm just going to keep the cooldown like this. So that's it for the first script. If we close it off. Now we've going over to the starter GUI and open up the local script. Okay, so up top we have a few variables. So the first one is called current cam. And this equals to the game dot workspace dot current cam. And current cam is the camera that the players are currently using. So we're going to be using this to change their current camera to jump scare camera once it's been triggered. Then once again, we'll get the jump scare event, which is that remote event in the replicated storage. So we need to get this so we're able to play the animation and change the player's cameras when the remote event has been fired by the clients. Then down here, we're making a variable called jump scare cam. And this equals to the game dot workspace dot jump scare, which is that folder event dot camera which is that camera part that I showed you before. Then local monster equals to game dot workspace dot jump scare again, then dot monster, which is the actual jump scare NPC. Then we make a variable called anim, and this equals to the monster. Then we're waiting for the humanoid, so we're waiting for the child humanoid. Then dot animation, which is that actual animation which we created before. Then local anim track equals to the monster's humanoid. Then we're using this function called load animation and anim in between brackets is the animation that it's going to play. Then we're using the on client event on the jump scare event so we know when it's been fired to all the clients which is when the jump scare has been triggered. So once it's been triggered we're going to set the current camera's camera type to scriptable so we're actually able to script the camera's C-frame. Then we set the current camera C-frame which is like the position to that jump scare camera C-frame. Basically we're just changing the camera's position to that jump scare camera position. Then we're playing that animation track, so the jump scare will actually be animated. Then we're going to be playing the sound, which is that sound inside the script, by using the play function. Then after two seconds, we're going to be changing the camera type back to custom, and custom is like the default play camera view. So that's it for the local script. If we close it off, and now if we click play, so, once we touch this trigger, we should be able to see the jump scare. There you go. So guys, if this video helped, make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe down below. In the description, you can check my robots group and discord server. And I'll see you later. Bye!